This video is probably gonna get me in trouble with the RV manufacturers. And I'm willing to take that risk. Welcome to HB RV Lifestyle. They call me the Honey Badger because I give it to you straight in the RV business as always. Today's video is gonna be like an update for September 2023. In fact, today, September 1st, it's windier than all can be. So bear with the background noise and the sound. First off, we're gonna cover RV financing. Give you an update on that because there's some things we need to go over for September moving forward. Number two, we're gonna get into the juicy stuff. The stuff really the RV manufacturer doesn't really want me to share, but I think it's something you need to know. And number three, we're gonna go into why September and October, and we'll go into Thanksgiving, may be the best three months to buy an RV, especially if you're ready, willing, and able. Ah, uh, yes, the world of RV loans and financing could not get any more complicated, right? Wrong. There is a trend that has come back with the banks. It's been about 10 years since they've done it. But now what they're doing is they are running your address through Zillow. If you have outstanding credit and you're putting monster amount of money down, they are still putting your address in Zillow to see if you've sold your home or if your home is for sale. Because in the world of RV financing, there's only two banks that do full-time RV loans. The rest of them do not do live-ins. There's no FHA, there's no VA, nothing of that nature. Now I'm gonna do a full video on this concept later on this month. So pay attention, watch out for that. In fact, hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I do that video. The other trend that we're seeing is that they are asking on high dollar jumbo loans. They are asking now more and more, no matter what your credit is, for a background financial statement, meaning they're looking for 401k, they're looking for equity in home, money in the bank, assets. They're looking for a breakdown and proof of your assets for loans that are over $100,000. Now it's getting more prominent and more, how do I say it, more uh, expansive when you get over $150,000. The other new old trend has to do with down payment. They have not gotten rid of zero down, but we've started seeing, started seeing <laughs> a trend where credit unions and banks have lowered the amount financed, the amount you can max finance with zero down. So we've noticed that trend has gone down from around $50,000 down to around $40,000. So anything around 40 grand, even with outstanding credit, the banks have counter offered us saying they want at least 10% down. Now that's not a bad thing, folks, realistically, if you can put a little bit of down payment, it massively helps down the road when you're either gonna refinance it when interest rates go down, or if you're gonna go to sell it four or five years from now. I always tell people, do you really want to have a depreciation hit on sales tax and government fees? I don't really think so. To pay those up front, even if you use a credit card, will really help you in the long run. Who's ready for the juicy stuff? This is stuff that's probably gonna get me in trouble with some of the RV fan manufacturers, but I believe you should know. There has been a major campaign on social media pushing to you, the consumer, that there's a bunch of changes to your model 2024. I've seen a lot of TikToks and YouTubes and Instagrams where they're putting, uh, we'll call them influencers, in these brand new units. And they're really pushing you, the consumer, 
to call the dealer and say, hey, when are we going to be able to see the 2024s in person? We want to see the differences. Now, there are a few exceptions to this. One of them being Coachman Freedom Express, as an example. But the majority of the industry has not made one bloody change. Now, I could be wrong. I'm going back to Indiana for open house. Maybe they'll surprise me. But all the videos that they have been pushing on the industry, trying to get orders from dealers, I don't see a bloody difference from anything that they released in 2023. Now, let me give you kind of a, a reality of where the situation is. Shipments compared to last year, 2022, is down 53% overall. So they're trying to push manufacturing. But right now, what they don't understand is the fact that the market is so oversaturated with 2023s that dealers are going to push back. In reality, if a dealer took on 2024s, they're going to price them much higher than a 2023 so you pick the 2023 or they make all the money on the 2024. Let me sit now and defend the RV manufacturers for just a minute because they do deserve a little they do deserve a little defending as well. When you're the general manager of a brand or a factory, you're trying to keep your people in place where you don't have to lay them off. So what they're really trying to do is get orders from dealers using you, the consumer, so they can keep the assembly line moving and try to keep a level of quality up. We all know what happened during COVID. During COVID, quality was not the greatest. And a lot of that was one month they'd be shut down, one month they'd be open, and trying to refire up a factory and keep your quality up is very hard and not only is it hurt for the actual delivery of the units to the dealership but it also hurts their pocketbook and warranty so there is a big defense for what they're doing i just think they're going about it the wrong way if i were an rv manufacturer and i wanted to up and ramp up production the first thing i would focus on is the inventory that's on the dealership's lot. The main focus should be how do we help dealers move the rest of their 2022s and their 2023s where we are able to put more inventory on their lot. But unfortunately, this is where I'm gonna hit them a little hard. That's not the focus. When a car manufacturer overbuilds a certain model, they come up with financial and financing incentives for consumers to go buy that certain model. Let's use Kia Sereno as an example. So if they built, let's say, a bunch of uh, cloth interior Serenos and they haven't moved all year long, Kia will specifically target that model and go, okay, we're going to offer a humongous rebate and possibly on top of that, a special interest rate for 60 or 72 months to help move that car to incentivize and help the dealership not lose money on that car. It doesn't mean the dealership won't lose money. Maybe they'll lose a little bit, but it'll help cover a lot of the possible losses that a dealership may incur selling that vehicle. Now, in defense Again, I'm going to defend the RV manufacturers. It's not like there's a Forest River RV finance company that's all privately banked, like Bank of America, U.S. Bank, a lot of credit unions, so on and so forth. So it isn't like they can control the interest rate factor. But there are other creative things that a RV manufacturer can do to help dealerships move inventory off the lot without asking for a reorder. In all this juiciness, there are some good things coming out of it. So the first thing that's coming good out of it is that you, the consumers, have not shied away from the interest rate, or at least the majority of you that understand 
that because the interest rates are really high, that dealer prices and profits are really low. In some cases, there is no profit. So you're practically buying every single travel trailer motorhome from the majority of dealers for pretty close to what they paid for it or below what they paid for it. So these are very positive things for you, the consumer, and very positive for the dealer and the manufacturer in the long term. Maybe not in the short term for the manufacturer or the dealer, but in the long term, you're still out there buying. We're still seeing consumers with good credit and down payment buying at a very high pace. Now, I don't think it's like the COVID pace, but probably more like 2019 pace. Now, biggest part of that whole thing is the oversaturation that I've talked about several times in this video. You're being a little more picky. You're actually shopping a little bit more. You're taking your time a little more because there is such an oversaturation of floor plans out there. This is where what I talked about earlier that the manufacturer really should focus on inventory on the ground rather than new orders is because of the oversaturation, especially west of the Mississippi. At the end of the day, dealerships are moving inventory at a good pace. <clears throat> not a record pace, not a great pace, but a good pace. The next three months are critical for RV dealers to move their 2023 inventory because as they say in Game of Thrones, winter is coming. And winter brings a lot of slowdown. Most dealerships are fighting Santa Claus by the time we get past Thanksgiving. And then you're fighting, oh, I don't know, in most of the country, snowstorms, hail, blizzards, so on and so forth. In the next three months, dealerships are gonna be highly motivated to move at least 40 to 50% of their inventory that's on the ground right now. That's 2023. 2024s, they're gonna keep at a very high price and carry them over into next spring. That's just the way it's gonna work, folks, okay? Now, that all being said, there's a lot of people out there that say, don't buy now, the interest rates are too high, okay? Well, let me tell you why that's a bad idea and why the next three months could be critical if you're ready. You're gonna say, I'm gonna buy in February of next year. Hey, these next three months are the best time to buy it. And here's what it is. If the prediction that a lot of people have made that interest rates are gonna crash next year, that because of the election cycle that Joe Biden is going to force his hand that the Democrats are going to force their hand to lower interest rates. There's two things that happen with that. Number one, housing is going to just shoot through the roof. If you thought it shot through the roof during COVID, if interest rates go down to three and 4% again for housing, it's, it's the housing prices are just going to go astronomical. But guess what happens to RV prices? Dealerships will jack up the prices because now they have the ability to make the payments affordable and they can make each deal more profitable. So when interest rates are high, dealership profits are either very low or non-existent. Just goes to tell you that the industry as a whole right now is more incentivized to sell units at a cheaper price than they will when, in, when interest rates go down. The next three months are super critical. I don't care if you live in Florida, New York, uh, Calgary, Vancouver. I don't care if you live in Ottawa, Saskatchewan, Texas. We're all, you all have a major, major three month decision to make. And here's what the conversation is. The conversation goes like this. Are we going to RV in 2024? And if we are, what's stopping us from doing it now? And if it's the words interest rate, am I willing to pay more money for the unit as a total price to have the lower interest rate? If that's the case, wait. But if you're like, no, 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 no. I like the prices right now. 
then what you can always do is refinance the loan through another entity like a credit union, another credit union, another bank, when interest rates go down. This is why 2009 was the largest buyer's market on record so far. This might end up it right now. That's my prediction. In 2009, the average interest rate was around 16%, even with great credit. So folks will be buying Winnebago motorhomes for, you know, invoice or less. And they paid on it for two years at the high interest rate. And then in 2011, interest rates crashed. And when interest rates crashed, you watched a bunch of people march to their credit union. Bum, 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 and they went and refinanced the loan and saved themselves tens of thousands of dollars. You are going to be in a excellent position when you're ready to sell it or when you're ready to trade it in because you did buy it right. But right now, this is the perfect three months to get your next RV. It's the most incentivized. It's probably the best time to bury all your negative equity from your trade into the next one because you're buying it right. Well, we'll keep watching until next time. Remember, RV stands for toolkit and sense of humor.